This has to be one of my favorite things about hunting at the car boot. You literally never know what you're gonna find. Hello again, folks, and welcome back to another live game hunting episode. And this time again, we are back at the car boot, possibly for one of the last times this season. It's now mid September. The mornings are getting darker and wetter, and who knows how many car boots there will be. But at the end of the day, we're going to be hitting up as many as possible because you never know what you're going to find at the car boot. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and please subscribe as I put new videos out every Saturday Live at 5, as well as bonus content throughout the week. And I really want you folks along for the ride. Now, let's get to the car boot. Here we go then, bright and early on a Sunday morning at the greatest car boot in the world, Arming Hall, just outside Norwich. Now, it may be coming to the end of the car boot season, but that doesn't mean we won't be able to find a bargain today. And straight away, I'm drawn to this flight stick. Now, if you can get these cheap, they're normally worth picking up. This one trades in for £18, I think it is in CX, but sadly, we're asking £10. And when it's from one of these kind of clearance stalls, I tend to kind of stray away from these because at the end of the day, you don't know if it's working. And honestly, the same thing goes for consoles. Unless I can get a console at the car boot for an absolute offer I can't refuse, I will normally pass. And that goes on to most electronics as well, because at the end of the day, if these things don't work, you're just making a loss. And I know it can be a gamble. Sometimes that gamble does pay off. But to be honest, I'm not really a gambling man. I'm looking for more games, DVDs, Blu-rays, the kind of stuff that flips easy into CX, or obviously the stuff I want to add into my collection. And this is the kind of bread and butter at the car boot. This is what you see all the time. These piles of DS and kind of filler tiles, but it's always worth checking. If anyone ever tells you you can't find good retro at the car boot, show them this video. Check this out. A really large selection of PlayStation 1 games, some consoles, some pop vinyls, just loads and loads of really cool stuff. Game Boy games, just everything you'd love to see at the car boot. This was a reseller to be fair, but not all resellers are bad. All of the prices were fair, and at the end of the day, one of the advantages of resellers is that they will go out and source these games so you don't have to. Games such as this, Pokemon Platinum Edition. Now, this was in absolutely incredible condition. I think he was asking 70 quid for this, which is a really good price. Now, I couldn't remember if I already had this in the collection, you know, problems of game collecting, but I did, so I did pass. Here we have the first of many retro Star Wars finds today. No, not the Pokemon Encyclopedia. This frankly terrifying Wampa and Luke Skywalker. This is really cool. I think it's from the 90s re-release of the original trilogy of Star Wars, but nowhere near as cool as this. It was like this motion book. It was very cool. I think I'm asking three or four pounds on this. I did pass it because at the end of the day, sadly, you can't collect everything. Moving on, and you always have to check for these giant boxes of DVDs, just in case there's any games. This time we did have some PC games in here. Now, I was quite tempted to pick up Command & Conquer Generals because I'm not sure if it's one of those games that just isn't available at all anymore. I know there's a lot of these older PC games that are getting delisted, and this is the only way to play them. Not a game find, but a very cool retro find. Check out these old-school Disney parks cool cups maybe these were really cool for lack of a better term i guess these are the kind of merchandise you'd have picked up from the disney world park and yeah these were super cool so 90s here we have something i've never picked up before at the car boot apple tv now i don't really know a great deal about apple tv i've just recently upgraded my phone i've added apple arcade to my plan so i don't know if this is worth picking up to be able to play apple arcade games or also of course for streaming tv they were asking 30 pounds for this i'm not sure if that's a good price or not and of course with a car boot there's always a risk of it not working but let me know would you have picked up this for 30 quid back to retro star wars finds and this time we have star wars episode one chess and if nothing else, the figures on this were so cool. Like, I'm a big chess fan. This was super cool. I love little collectibles like this to place around the game. So, I mean, if the price is right, more often than not, I'll definitely pick these up. <laughs> so, our first pick up of today was a 20p Archer figure. But let's get back to the video games. Now, it's really unfortunate that the PlayStation 3 games are getting less and less valuable and trading in for less and less sometimes the lego games you can trade in for a decent price i think they wanted three pounds for this one and at the end of the day it trades in for three pounds 
Next up, we have an absolute stack of WWE and I think some WWF figures. Now, I've been really wanting to get back into collecting WWE and, of course, WWF figures. But for me, when it comes to these retro toys, and remember, these are toys, it does all come That's down to body. condition. <laughs> and at the end of the day, a lot of these had been played with quite heavily, as you can expect from a wrestling figure. Now, there's some really weird ones in here, like that bendy Roman Reigns, this incredibly not bendy Stone Cold Steve Austin. And... At the end of the day, I'm looking for the figures to be in really nice condition because these are quite abundant at the car boot, but when it comes to retro toys, it is all about condition. I do like finding the really random ones, like that bendy Roman Reigns, the incredibly stiff Stone Cold Steve Austin, and just all of these other retro toys. You can get some absolute bargains like this at the car boot. That's why I always go through these massive kind of boxes of loose figures because at the end of the day, you never know what you're gonna find. Nothing too exciting here this time, unfortunately, but I do love a good dig at the car boot. And back to the Star Wars stuff again. So hiding amongst all this kind of newer Star Wars stuff, we have this. This is proper retro. I think this was late 70s, early 80s Star Wars. This is like a film reel from Star Wars. I had no idea what this was. I had no idea how to play it, so I did pass. I don't know what it is. We keep seeming to play tennis between wrestling and Star Wars. So and here we have the John Cena experience. Again, I still have no idea what the John Cena experience is. I think I picked this up at a car boot at the start of this year and still haven't got around to watching it it's definitely worth keeping an eye out for some of these wwe dvds but sadly these ones weren't worth very much much like these boxes when you just see just stacks of games of course you know i'm going to dig through these but these are kind of the really common games the games that trade into cx for pence but if you are looking to build a game collection, this is a great way to do it. Or even if you are going for a full collection, say you are going for a full PlayStation 2 collection, like my friend PS2 Mini Games, this is a great way to fill the gaps in your collection because normally you can bundle these games up so cheap. Say you wanted like 10 FIFA games, you're probably going to get them for two or three pounds, but it's all about digging through and seeing if there's anything that anyone's missed, the games that trade in decently because if at the end of the day, if a seller is selling the games like this, they're probably looking to get rid of them cheap. I did check out this Guitar Hero controller here because these can trade in for some decent money. Unfortunately, it was the Wii one, so I did pass because it doesn't seem to trade in for much. I've said it before, but I do not have the greatest knowledge of comics. All of these comics here were a pound, but... I don't know if that's a good deal or not, and I literally have to judge a book by the cover. Now, I did recognise the kind of Civil War storyline here, and I was tempted to pick some of these up, but I just don't know where to really begin with stories of these comics. Like, I don't want to pick up an issue halfway through a storyline and have no idea how it begins or ends, so I did pass on these. Normally, if I buy comics, I'll buy bundles. If you ever see a box like this at a car, but it's always worth having a bit of a rummage. You never really know what's going to be in here. So hidden amongst the Skylanders was some Nintendo DS games. And if I can pick up a decent DS game for a quid, yeah, I'm probably going to add it to the collection. Now, I don't have the greatest knowledge, again, of Skylanders. And I know some of these, and I mean a very, very small majority, minority of these, do trade in for decent money but i did pass this time as well as this xbox 360 i was tempted to pick this up just because it had the wireless adapter but i did pass because again at the end of the day i have no idea if this was working so i did pass moving on from seeing just one xbox 360 just seeing a whole plethora of consoles we have absolutely tons of consoles here including a mega drive plug and play i've never seen before but i know some of these at games mega drives are absolutely awful so of course i did pass on this one this sims box set was quite interesting i think just a compendium of every sims game ever made and of course absolutely stacks of games here including some playstation one games they were even some platinum games but unfortunately i did have these ones for my platinum project and here we have even more star wars with the star wars collector packs from kenner from the 90s now these were super cool they would take so much space to display they're essentially free characters on their card backing in like this slip case for like collectors now I was intrigued by these because they were super cool, but I did not realise he was asking 70 quid each for these, which, as you know, some Star Wars stuff is absolutely crazy expensive. I had no idea these were that rare, that's why I was like quite interested in them, but I did pass, of course. Now, here is one of the most intriguing signs I've ever seen at a car boot. Nintendo 64 for sale and games kept in the car. Now, I was trying to keep my cool at this point. 
So there is an N64 for sale on a stall. Let's just casually look through these games. Nothing really to write home about, but you know, I don't want to like get too excited, like kind of make them realize I'm really interested in this N64. I'll have a casual look through some of these games and I'll just Nintendo casually ask about inside. the N64. But inside, I was very yeah. excited. And when they bought it out of the car, it was a big bundle. You can see we have N64 games, controllers, the console. No games that really blew my mind, but how, much were you how often is it? it you see an N64 bundle of this size and caliber at the car boot? This was crazy. Like, all of this was in really nice condition. The controllers had good sticks. Now, she was asking £100 for this bundle. Bear in mind, it had the console, about 12 games, and the console did have the expansion pack. Now, I did pass just because I'm so busy at the minute. I just don't have the time to resell a bundle like this. I do kind of regret it. It was a very good deal. But remember, the car boot, you have no guarantee if it's working. So I did pass on the N64. I'm sure some of you are screaming at your screen in a minute saying you would have picked that up. But I did pass for my own reasons. But back to the game hunt. We've got some interesting games here, including the Atari game, which if I can get cheap, I will pick up. How, how much your Atari game? Uh, three quid. That was 799. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, a bargain there. Got done. How about this DS one? Uh, that's four pounds. Four. So I did pass on the sealed DS game, but I did yeah, pick up the Atari price. game because at the end of the day, it was half its original price and I'm happy to pay that to you add it to the collection. Yeah, got it. Moving on to the next stall, and by the looks of it, somebody was selling their entire PlayStation 3 collection. Now, my PlayStation 3 collection is nowhere near as big as my Xbox 360 section because most of the time, if I buy a game that's released on both consoles, I bought it for the Xbox 360 as that was a console which I owned back in the day. But I'm always looking to fill gaps in my PlayStation 3 collection. Now, even though there was loads of games here they were all games i already had the main thing that did intrigue me is this new old stock which i love vertical stand for the playstation 3 but they were asking five pounds on this so i did pass which is a bit of a shame so far today we have seen so much retro but i was really not expecting to see a snes game it is clay fighters so not the most exciting game of all time but if i can get this for cheap then i'm definitely happy to pick it up how much you got on your clay fight six Would you do five at all? I did have a ten or Okay. Now for a fiver I thought this wasn't a bad price as that's the price it is in CX but the thing is there's only one copy in CEX so I wish I had picked this one up even though the back of the cart was faded I really should have picked this up I didn't realise this was such a rare SNES game you can see here I was trying to bundle it up but I did miss out on that one which was really annoying but we move I moved on to the next one I found this old Tom Tommy Tommy like Pokemon marble toys. I don't know if anyone ever remembers it. He had like a ring and he rolled them towards each other. Really cool, but they were three pound each. Now, when it comes to consoles at the car boot, I am always pessimistic. I always presume they don't work, but let me know in the comments down below. Would you have picked this Gears of War Xbox One up for 30 quid? You can see here the back is slightly open. Now, the seller did, did say to me this is definitely working, but unfortunately, I'm not a gambling man. And if I could have got it for 15, maybe 30, no way. My wife was very tempted to pick up this vintage Simon. I think this was from the 70s or the 80s. It was boxed and complete. It was fully working, but we just couldn't negotiate a price, unfortunately. Moving on, we have another box of DVDs, games, and even yes, VHS tapes. Like I said, I will always dig through these because you never know what you're going to find. Of course, they're normally going to be like really common games and just worthless DVDs, but that's what the car boot's all about. It's about digging because you never know what you're going to find. I was tempted to pick up that steel book, but I did pass we are coming to the end here the obligatory little pile of playstation 3 games most of which were faded but hiding here was an xbox one controller now this looked like the official controller to me sticks felt good all the buttons felt good but whenever you pick up a controller always check the battery compartment because this is more often than not where the problems are going to be. You can see here we have acid corrosion. If I ever see this on the controller, I'll always walk away. But let me know in the comments down below if you know a good way to sort out this battery like corrosion for the battery acid. I did pass, even though this was really cheap. But let me know, would you have picked it up? 
There we have it then folks, it may not have been the most successful day at the car boot, but for me it's all about the hunt. We had seen some amazing bits and even though we hadn't picked much up, we still had a few bits for the collection. So let's take it back to the games room for the pickups. Here we are then back in the games room from the car boot and like I said, you never know what you're going to find at the car boot. We saw a bit of everything. We saw video games, we saw Pokemon games, we even saw that N64 bundle. But at the end of the day, you have to have budgets. And if something doesn't feel right, you have to walk away. You may say I'm pessimistic, but I did pass on a lot of those offers because at the end of the day, I have no idea if those things are working. And I guess this is one of the gambles that you take when you go to the car boot. So unfortunately, I'm not a gambling man. I did pass, but I've still got a couple of pickups for the collection. I wouldn't say today's a fail, but it definitely wasn't the finest hour of the car boot. But we are at the tail end of the season, so let's go for those pickups. First up then, we have this pickup, which I picked up for just 20p. Is this Archer little tiny miniature figure. This is the kind of classic little thing you'll find in a loot box, but for 20p, I'll adorn this on my shelf. Next up, we have some Nintendo DS games. At the end of the day, if I can pick up a box complete Nintendo DS game for a pound, as long as it's not some kind of generic puzzle game or Sudoku game, chances are I'm gonna pick it up. So first off, we have Race Driver Grid. This is boxed and complete for just a pound. And for that price, I think it's worth adding to the collection. And next up, we have a game which ironically is a port of a mobile game, Asphalt 2 Urban GT. But like I said, if I can pick up box complete Nintendo DS games for a pound, I'm happy to add them to the collection. We're on to our final pickup. Like I said, this wasn't the best car boot of all time, but I hope it just paints a more realistic picture of what car boots can be. You win some and you lose some, but at the end of the day, it's all about building a collection and it takes time. You will have car boots where you don't get anything. You may get one or two pickups like we have today, but at the end of the day, for me, it's all about the thrill of the hunt and just finding stuff I normally wouldn't find, say, in a charity shop or in the wild, such as this Atari ST golf game. I'm not even going to try it and go for the title, it's incredibly long and complicated, but £3 for a game that was £7.99 back in the day, it may depreciate a little bit in value, but buying an Atari ST game in a car boot can't be bad. There we have it then folks, that is another car boot in the bag, and unfortunately it wasn't the greatest car boot of all time for pickups, but we saw some awesome things. But let me know, in your area, are the car boots sadly coming to an end? As autumn and even winter is drawing in, the car boots will probably get quieter and more and more sparse. But you know me, I'm going to keep hunting as long as you folks keep watching. So hit that like button, subscribe, and as always, keep playing the game. See y'all soon.